G'day guys, it's Tom here with MYT Solar. This week, we wanna bring you with us as we go through a full solar lithium inverter install on this rig we have. Show you all the steps that we take from start to finish. Let's go. So the first thing that we do when we get to a rig, just like this 19 MKS that we're working on this week, is we walk around, we look inside, and we figure out exactly where we're gonna put the bulk of the install. And the bulk of the install, I'm talking about the giant inverter and the batteries. So one option for that big equipment in this small trailer, this 19 MKS, would be the pass-through here. You can probably tell by it being loaded with stuff that we're actually not gonna use that on this build. If you look back at some of our videos, you'll see we did a video with the RV geeks, our install we did for those guys. That had their three Battleborn game changers in the compartment here, but we're not gonna do that. Our batteries and everything else are gonna be inside. So the other option in this 19 MKS is the dinette seats here. So the Murphy bed's gonna fold down, but these here are an option. And so on this one, we're actually gonna put all of the equipment, the batteries, the inverter, the charge controller, everything consolidated under this dinette. So in this planning phase, figuring out where the equipment's gonna go. Obviously the solar panels are gonna go on the roof. There's not a lot of question about that, but we like to get up on the roof on day one, map out exactly how many panels we can fit on there, start looking at the other roof fixtures, maybe some things that need to be removed in order to get that amount of equipment up there. Next up, will be up on the roof. So thankfully our rich solar panels that we tend to use, our 250 watt panels come with these foam pieces to protect the panels, which also double as a template as we're mapping out the roof. So you can see here on the roof, we've got a layout of where everything's gonna go. This customer was going for 1500 watts, which is six of these panels. And so we've mapped these out on the roof, trying to avoid the air conditioner as much as possible because of the shade it will bring. We will be using our rails for this so we can cover this skylight. Uh, we will have to remove the wine guard. So that's why it's important that we get up here on day one on the roof and figure out what needs to come off because that's going to need to be resealed. Anything that's left when we remove maybe the factory panels or the factory junction box into the camper or the wine guard, all of that's going to be need to be removed, sealed. And then of course we want to give some time for that die core to set before we are actually up here cabling and bringing more panels up and things like that where we could get ourselves in a bit of a mess with the die core. So that roof's all prepped now. We mounted our rails. We sealed everything up nicely with Dicor. The next time we get back up on that roof is going to be one of the very last steps we do and that's when we bring up our solar panels and we actually cable them and mount them to the roof. Now we're going to go inside the RV, we're going to clear out that location where we plan on doing the install. We may need to build some reinforcing walls, make sure that everything is mounted and mapped out perfectly where everything's going to go. This one's a bit of a jigsaw so that mapping out phase takes a lot of time. We've got some templates and things that'll help us with that and that's the next step. So once everything is mounted here and all that prep is done, the next step is going going to be doing all of our little, we call them little wires, you know, that's going to be things like all the communication cables for the Victron equipment, our fan wires, our LED wires, Not a, none of our real like battery cable stuff, but a lot of the little trigger wires and little communication wires, they'll be done next. So as well as getting all our equipment mounted, we also, this is the point where we'd also add our ventilation, so we've got our fans and some vents in here to keep this compartment cool. The other thing we have to consider whenever we're choosing our install location is not only is there going to be a lot of cable within here, and you'll see it at the end exactly how much there will be. There's also got to be a lot of cable that gets here. We've got to get 120 volt, we've got to get 12 volt, we've got to get cables for our touch screen. There's a lot of cable that has to come into this compartment. So this is where we also make those holes that'll allow that cable to kind of head in the direction in the RV that we need to. Batteries have been removed here from the tongue. One of the things that we do carefully before we move away the existing batteries is see what needs powering, identify our cables, use a multimeter if we need to. Luckily we know enough about these outdoors RVs that we know what's what up the front here. And everything that was getting power before, whether that's a slide out or the tongue jack or some solar that was coming to the batteries, we need to identify all those cables and focus on how we're going to bring them up to where our installation is. So then it's pretty much just a full day spent on cabling. So in that dinette area, just in there all day, making cable from our charge controllers to our distributor, making cable for our multi-plus, making cable for our 24 volt to 12 volt step down. Our cabling is a big part of what we do. It takes a full, at least one full day. After that, all that prep and mounting and all those little wires are done. We, you know, we'll make cable outside, we'll bring it in, we'll orient the lugs to make sure that they're gonna work. Because once, a lot of those cables, once they're crimped down, they don't really like to face and bend the way that they tend to do. So it's a big day cabling, but we got the bed fully prepped, the batteries are in, the multi-plus is in, and all our 12 volt is cabled. The next thing we're gonna look at is 120 volt. So the 120 volt is probably one of the biggest challenges on the install and something that's the most time consuming. We have to basically redirect the power from the shore power that came into the coach 
remote that would have gone straight to the breaker panel. We need to bring it up to our installation bay and then back to the breaker panel. And this particular customer is also getting a Hughes watchdog. So there's a little bit involved in that as well. So not only is there a lot of running of cable through the trailer, which is a challenge working out where we're going to send the cable, how we're going to get it from A to B. We definitely try to leave the actual wiring of the 120 volt as one of the very last things that we do, mostly because we need to plug in our vacuum cleaner into some of the outlets and we need to keep powering the old RV converter so that we can keep our 12 volt going so we have lights and everything as well. We get the 120 prepped and get it where we need to be. You can see here it's pretty much ready to go, but we won't wire that in until one of the last things we do. So with that bed fully done, with the 120 planned out and ready to wire in on that last minute, we start thinking about our other little task. One of those that we do at the same time as 120 volt because it involves running a lot of cable is our touch 70 screen. So figuring out the best location for that. You know, there's sometimes there's an ideal location where we'd like to have it, but it's just physically impossible to get cable to that screen. It might be coming through the side wall of the RV, which is all foam, which is impossible. So figuring out a location for the touch 70, getting it mounted in a nice place for the customer and running that cable over to our installation bay. At that point, we're looking around for any other little extras that the customer might be getting. In this case, customers getting an external solar port with an Anderson connector so he can plug it up to 600 watts of ground panels that are tied into another controller underneath the dinette there. So that's something extra we have to do. The other thing that we need to get done sometimes, not in this particular build, is maybe running cable for an Anderson connector at the front for a DC to DC charger. Sometimes customers want us to build some extra 120 volt outlets in the RV in their pass through, things like that. Any of those little extras, that's where we'd probably start trying to get all those done. As it gets close to the end of the install, Jake and I like to run through everything, just rehash what exactly we've done and what's got left. So we know we've got the roof totally prepped for solar panels. We know that the bed is completely done and cabled in. We know our 120 volt is ready. It'll take a few minutes just to wire it in at the last minute. Our Touch 70 is wired in and the HDMI is ran and the USB are ran to our install bay. The little extras like the external port are wired in. The Hughes watchdog is there and ready. So all that really leads is paneling, getting those panels on the roof and cabled, wiring in that 120 finally, programming the system and testing the system. So we got all six of the panels up here. These are 250 watt panels. They are going to be in a three series, two parallel configuration. First thing we do when we bring the panels up and sit them on the rails, the first thing we do is secure them down so that as we're moving around, we're not going to knock a panel off the roof. Then we'll cable them, clean up the roof, get the cable managed and that'll be paneling. If you're looking for some solar panels for your project, I highly recommend Rich Solar. That's all we have ever used and all we will ever use. They're a great company, really polite to deal with. These are their 250 watt panels, their pro version. So they're a high VOC panel, a really good panel for this type of project. We've got a link to the Rich Solar website down in our description. Jump on there and you'll probably find everything you need for your project. So what I'm up to now is the final step, which is really one of the most important steps. And that is programming all of the Victron equipment. So in this install, we've got the smart BMS. We've got two charge controllers. We've got the servo. We've got the multi plus, we've got the touch 70 screen. All of those need very specific programming, which is what I'm doing right now very carefully. I also need to program our relays. So our LEDs here need to be programmed by the touch 70. I also need to program our vents here. We have a Ruby tag in the bay, which Bluetooth is to the screen. I need to program these fans here to come on at a certain temperature. So once that's all programmed, we're happy with the system. We plug it in, we test it, we charge the batteries up, we work the batteries, we run the air conditioner with that soft start that we installed on the roof. We put heavy loads on the batteries and we get ready for our walkthrough tomorrow. So there we have it. An awesome little setup on this 19 MKS. We got it done. Customer's gonna be stoked with this rig ready. Unfortunately, we don't get to take it away and go out and enjoy it. We're gonna be doing our walkthrough with the customer. They'll learn the ropes of their system, learn how to use all the Victron software suites, learn how to manage their power, learn how to not mess things up, although it's pretty hard with this Victron stuff. Learn how to be comfortable with it so they can be confident when they're out boondocking that their system is performing how they want to and they can just get after it and enjoy their time. If it's your first time coming to this channel, thanks for being here. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button so that you can keep seeing some of this RV off-grid content. This is Tom with MYT Solar. Thanks for coming along with us through this install. If there's anything else you'd like to see from one of our videos, just post that in the comments. We'll try to get that. We have a little bit of time coming off here soon in our winter period. We'll be able to put out more videos. If there's anything you want to see a video on, just let us know in the comments. Cheers. Have a good day.